Welcome to a video training session offered by Oakland Presbyterian Church for those either elected or called to the task of chairing a committee, a board, or task force. Our goal is to give you the information and equipping you need to undertake this important role in the life of the church. Effective, well-prepared leaders are always able to help their group get positive results, even if the going is slow or the roadblocks are many. Remember, the Lord always equips those He calls. As Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 5.24, He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. So if this is a new role for you, or you're feeling a little intimidated by the task laid before you, take heart. You are already filled with the Holy Spirit of God to guide and protect you on the road ahead. Remember also that the most important mark of leadership in a Christian church isn't competence, but humility. Humble leaders are always able to inspire those they lead, even when they make mistakes, because they don't see themselves or personal accomplishments as the most important thing. We are human. We make mistakes. But Jesus brings us freedom to learn and grow. Mistakes and failures can turn out to be a gift but only if we are humble enough to lay aside our ego, pride, and self-sufficiency. The best work of any group of people happens when it meets together. That's when we can share and listen to ideas. We can quickly organize ourselves when we're talking openly with each other. And we can solve problems and avoid pitfalls before they happen. We can get to know each other, learn each other's strengths and weaknesses and develop a sense of teamwork when we meet together. Committees and boards of the church really have to meet if they want to fulfill the task the session has given them of overseeing, planning, and organizing the right people and the right resources. So, what are the keys to running an effective meeting? Have the chairperson take the role of a moderator. Team members discuss and decide while the moderator listens and guides to decision or action. This doesn't mean the moderator can't participate in the discussion, but it's always keeping in mind that the goal is to move toward a course of action the committee can decide to take. Choose a day and a time when people can meet, even if different than when the group has met in previous years. Always open and close the meeting in prayer. This can be done by anyone in the committee. You might want to assign committee members to provide a devotional or lead one of the prayers. To grow a sense of community in the group, take time to ask members to share prayer requests and joys and concerns as well. Always start on time. This is critical. Your group is made up of volunteers taking time out of their busy schedules to gather together to do important work. Starting at the agreed-upon announced time shows that you as a chairperson honor the commitment of time they have made. Set a meeting agenda plan with end-of-meeting time goal and target a start time for each agenda item. Having an agenda that everyone can look at helps people know about specific goals of the meeting, so be prepared to share that with the team beforehand. We'll look at the items to include on your agenda in just a minute. Be ready to interrupt discussion when you have exceeded your target time limit for that issue to decide to do one of three things. Either A, continue the discussion, B, carry it over to a future meeting, or C, end the discussion and make a decision. Stay on point and be ready to steer the group back on a subject if the discussion is veering off to follow rabbit trails or personal agendas. Before you vote on a decision, make sure of two things. First, that everyone understands what you are deciding. And second, that everyone has been given a chance to voice their opinion or their concerns. At the end of every meeting, summarize and celebrate accomplishments, the lessons you've learned, and your overall team effort. 
even if the gains have been small, highlight the wins the group has made toward achieving their overall goals during the meeting. If your meeting is held online or has some group members participating in the meeting online, make sure everyone feels they are equally a part of the group's work. Invite people to stay on camera and off mute unless there's a lot of background noise going on in their space. Asking another group member to curate the meeting for online participants can help free you up as the chairperson to moderate the discussion. This person can let you know if someone has a question or they've made a comment in the chat or wants to speak to the rest of the group. A typical meeting agenda should look something like this. While this is a pretty standard format for organizational meetings, feel free as the chairperson to create an agenda which works for the best of your group. Every group is different, with unique combinations of creative people, structure people, vision people, and detail people. Construct an agenda which you feel will get the best out of your group, and don't be afraid to trial and error it for a couple of meetings. The session requires that whenever a committee, board, or task force of the church meets, that they produce and then share a written record of what was accomplished and the items that were discussed. Whether they are presented as detailed minutes or just simply as meeting highlights, the written report gives the elders on the session insight into the committee's activities. They also can be helpful for the group itself. Whenever a question arises about a previous decision or discussion, when it happened, why it was made, the record of written reports can help your group keep its work in content, context. And finally, if a group member is not able to attend, the written report can help them stay up to speed. It's our experience that this works best when someone is taking the meeting notes who is not the moderator or chairperson. Appoint a scribe or secretary to keep the notes of the meeting, to clean them up after the meeting, and then submit them to you to distribute to the other members and then to the session. Here are the basics of written reports. Include the day, time, and format in which the meeting was held, either in person, at a particular location like the church, or online. Include a list of those who were present. The question about quorum sometimes arises here, and the church has no specific guidance for committees about what constitutes a minimum number of attendees to be able to conduct business. However, as a general rule of thumb, the goal should be to have at least half of the committee present to make sure that there can be adequate discussion and sharing of ideas, and as full a participation as possible. At the top of the written report, in bold, note decisions with the, which the committee is recommending as a motion forwarded to the session for approval. Here's an example of that. Placing these actions at the top of the report will make it easier for the clerk of session to make note that the committee will need time at the next session meeting to present their motion. Try to make the wording of the motion as specific and detailed as possible, perhaps also including a statement of rationale for why the committee is recommending this action to the session. Next on the written report, list decisions that were reached by the ministry team. This helps the session track the issues your committee is working on or implementing, in case they are asked a question about it from a church member. Finally. List other items the team is working on or planning. So now that your report is finished, what happens next? Ask the committee's note taker to type the report and then email it to you to forward on to the committee to check for corrections and accuracy. Once the report has been vetted by the group, Email as a PDF or Word file to both the clerk of session and the staff church administrator. 
try to do this no later than the Tuesday prior to session meeting so it can be included in the packet sent to session members prior to its meeting. If requesting time on the session docket, inform the administrator and clerk of session by email when you submit the report. Estimate the number of minutes that will, needed, will be needed for your report. Make sure everyone in the group has the latest version of the written report of the previous meeting. Actually approving minutes of the previous meeting on the next meeting's agenda is completely up to you, but the important thing is that they have been checked and they are as accurate as possible. The session is busy overseeing other committees and boards as well as yours. The written report ensures that the session is as up-to-date on all the work that you are doing. So there's no need to take up time in the session meeting going over all the details of your committee's meeting. However, there are a few circumstances where it's required and prudent to bring a recommendation for session action. When a proposed expenditure will likely exceed the team's budget. Session approval is not needed for all committee expenditures, but if your work puts the committee in the red for its budget, the session will need to decide how to fund your work additionally. If time is of the essence, it's a good idea to also share this request with the church treasurer, who might have some ideas to share with the session about where additional funds might be found so your work can go ahead without significant delay. When your group is proposing a general, congregation-wide fundraising activity or donation drive. Session approval is not required when the effort is localized to a small group of church members. However, if a broad appeal is going to be shared with the entire church family, this requires session approval to ensure it will not conflict or undermine other efforts. When the proposed action exceeds the boundaries of the team's area of supervision or impacts the work of other teams or areas of church ministry. An example of this is a decision to create a new staff position, which will require input from other groups about a job description, forming a search committee, and deciding on salary range. Section action is not required if the action falls within the boundaries of the team's area of supervision. When the proposed action changes, deletes, or updates congregational policies affecting all members or overall ministry and mission of the church, or if the decision changes the congregation's organizational structure by adding or deleting a new group on the, session, on the committee level. In particular, the approval of the session is required if an action taken by the, the group will require a signed contract or agreement with a vendor or provider. As always, when in doubt, ask the moderator and the clerk for guidance. Thorough communication is absolutely critical in a healthy functioning church, just as it is with any group or relationship. There needs to be open, easily accessible, and consistently maintain avenues of communication within the group's membership, and then also between your group and the session, and your group and staff and congregation. When it comes to communication between yourself and team members, err on the side of over-communication as opposed to under-communicating. Use email or text messages, or use your team's mailbox in the entrance to Fellowship Hall next to the forum classroom. Always give a reminder of a team meeting a few days in advance, whether it's a regularly scheduled or a rescheduled meeting. Try to avoid sending a reminder the day of the meeting, unless there's a change in plans. Team business may be conducted via email if necessary if there are urgent business or scheduling conflicts for members. But this must be the exception and not the rule. The preference is that you make decisions when you are meeting together so that you can discuss and share. When it comes to communicating with the session, 
please direct all reports and procedural questions to both the moderator and the clerk of session, preferably by email with as much notice as possible. Submit a monthly report for the docket. Take advantage of docket time when needed. Please refrain from communicating with session as a whole outside of the meeting by sending a blanket email or a letter, for instance, or having parking lot conversations. That's what your monthly report docket time is for. If time constraints require communication with the session between meetings, please direct that through the moderator and the clerk of session beforehand. Do not communicate directly or solicit a response from session members outside of its regular meetings. When it comes to communicating with any of the church staff who are not directly tied to your group, the preferred method of communication with staff is via email, or staff mailboxes in the office, or even setting up a meeting with advance request. Please refrain from stopping by unannounced or without an appointment, or calling on the phone to give instructions or do team business with staff. They have a full plate, and a minimum of unnecessary interruptions is appreciated. Office support staff is not available for basic ministry team support, like sending your emails, typing agendas or reports, photocopying or printing. If you require additional staff support, please set up a meeting with the staff member to work out details and then inform the head of staff. If you experience a disagreement or unsatisfactory service from a staff member, first share that feeling with the staff member in private. If you continue to have an issue, please inform the head of staff and or the administrative team with as much detail about the incident as possible. We'll address how to communicate your group's decisions and activities to the congregation a little later in this session. Great committees have great members who share a passion for the work, have a good mix of gifts and talents, and a willingness to work as a team. So committee membership is a key to your success. How many members should a committee have? It often depends on the scope of the work, but a good rule of thumb is no less than 6 and no more than 12. This range seems to be the sweet spot of good discussions and cohesive decision-making. Your committee may already have some members already that are involved, and it's a good idea to check in with them as soon as you assume the chairperson or moderator role to see if they are interested in continuing to serve. If you think that your committee still needs some new members with fresh ideas, then you'll need to do some recruiting. Recruiting new members for many can be really intimidating. It's hard to risk someone saying no to you. You may feel you don't know enough people in the church to adequately recruit. Well, take heart. Here are some time-tested tips on successfully building up your committee membership. First, make sure that you give plenty of time for discernment, prayer, and asking for help. Recruiting, hopefully, isn't something you'll have to do throughout your term, but if you make a concerted effort over a short period of time, it will pay dividends. Seek input from current team members and from session colleagues, the staff, the pastor, but also just keep your eyes open at all times. The church has a database of the interests, talents, and passions our members have, so checking with that can be a great way to get new names, especially of newcomers who are waiting to get plugged in. But the best way to recruit is whenever you meet someone at the church, share your committee's work with them and see if they are interested. Have two times more potential team member candidates than you have slots to fill. Sometimes the first people you ask agree, and you don't need the whole list. But sometimes you may even need to add a couple more names. But this ratio seems to provide enough of a pool of folks to approach so that you can reach your recruiting goal. The ask. Send a letter or email detailing the role and the task, 
and explaining why you feel the candidate is well-suited for it. Then, follow up with a phone call or a personal visit within one to three days of the person receiving the letter. This method gives the person a chance to think about it before you make direct contact, but not too long. Always be honest and thorough about the extent of the time commitment and the responsibilities entailed. It typically works better for a new member to find that the workload or the meeting times involved are better than they thought they would than to have underestimated them badly. Invite people to first visit a team meeting before deciding to commit. When recruiting, ask them to commit to nothing more than to attend one meeting and check out the group's work. If it's a good match and they receive a warm greeting from the other committee members, they will likely keep coming back and become a full-time member. Once you recruit someone to join your committee, you want to do whatever you can to ensure that their experience is a positive one. As a chairperson, you are responsible for creating and maintaining an atmosphere which nurtures all team members and gives them an outlet for their passions and their hopes for the church. Here's some ways that you can do that. Meet regularly. Start and end on time. Cover all agenda items and with adequate time allotted for each. Communicate. Keep your team members totally informed and avoid blindsiding them. Encourage brainstorming, discussion, and dis decision-making where everyone has a chance to have a say. Give everyone on the team a special role or task which is complementary with their gifts, talents, and skills an integral to the success in meeting the goals of the team. Congratulate publicly when the team has shared accomplishment. Affirm privately when a team member does special service or sets a good example. And then have an annual meeting that is just for socializing and enjoying one another. The rest of this video we'll go over the nuts and bolts of managing a committee, board, or task force at Oakland Press. Your committee may need to spend some money to accomplish its mission. If so, the procedures are fairly simple. Most committees of the church have a budget, which is part of the total annual operating budget of the church. The budget year begins on January 1st, and ends on December 31st. The operating budget for the coming year is approved at the December session meeting. The church's treasurer will ask all the committees for input on that budget through October and November, and that's a great time to do some strategic planning as a group and discuss ways you can fulfill your mission and estimate the cost. There are two ways to spend budget money. One is a check request for the amount needed and the payee, along with address or bank information. The other is a reimbursement of a committee member after money has already been spent. Both of these must be submitted to the church bookkeeper for payment. Here are some important things to do whenever you're spending budget money. Make sure expenditures have prior committee approval. Try to avoid approving expenses after the fact, if at all possible. You must have a receipt or invoice. This can be a piece of paper, an invoice, a screen capture, or email. It has to be provided by the payee and include the date of the transaction. The church does have a credit card, which can make purchases for committees under certain circumstances. Just as with any purchase, Prior committee approval is required, along with an invoice for payment. If you are wanting to have a fundraiser or support drive for the committee's work, again, this requires approval, not just by the committee, but the session as well. When planning the fundraiser, make sure to connect with the church bookkeeper so that that staff person knows how to direct funds. 
The church's giving portal on the website can include your fundraiser for online giving if you give the staff adequate notice. You may want to take advantage of the wonderful resource we have with our church building. We have a wide variety of spaces to accommodate a variety of events, from smaller classrooms, medium-sized meeting rooms, a gymnasium, and an auditorium. We also have some outdoor spaces groups can use year-round. Keep in mind, though, that the building has many users throughout the week, both church ministries and outside groups that support our mission. This means that it's important to have a weekly calendar and have good communication and coordination with all groups. Rooms and spaces must be reserved ahead of time. The best way to do this is by going online at oaklandpress.org, click the Event pull-down menu, and click Facility Use. This will take you to a form you can fill out, which asks for all the details of your meeting, activity, or event. This will serve as your building reservation. You can also request a paper form from the church administrator, fill it out, and return it. Make sure you plan in advance, with enough time to work through the details of making sure your space is ready for you. Please leave spaces as you found them. Before you go home, make sure your area is picked up, spills are taken care of, and trash has been disposed of properly. If you have special setup needs for a space, make sure to include that in your request with as much detail as possible. Sometimes a room diagram can be a helpful tool for our staff to get your space set up exactly as you need. Also, make sure to let us know what technical requirements you have. Will your gathering allow people to participate online? Do you need access to the church's Wi-Fi system? Will you need to present a PowerPoint? Will you need special sound equipment? If you aren't providing your own equipment, make sure to include your specific technical requirements on your request form. If your event will be before or after office hours, you will need to come in ahead of time to be trained on how to use the church's security system. Effective communication with the congregation is the way you can receive support and participation for your ministry or event. If you want to advertise, promote, or communicate with the congregation about something your committee is organizing, here are some steps to take. There are several avenues for communicating with the congregation from which you can choose. The most effective are the weekly e-newsletter, and the bulletins we use for worship. But you can also request other means of communication as well. Social media through the church's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts, a verbal announcement on Sunday, or flyers or posters. The building use reservation form has a section where you can let the church know what avenues you'd like to use along with the details about the event you want the congregation to know about. Again, please make sure you give the church administrator as much notice as possible prior to the event, the meeting, or the activity that you'd like to promote. I hope this training video has been helpful to you. It's impossible to cover all the situations and opportunities that you will face in your leadership role, but hopefully we have given you enough information about some of the basics so now you feel a little bit more confident and comfortable. As always, you can connect with your colleagues, the session, the pastor, and the staff if you need specific guidance, support, or help. But let me close this time by praying for you and your ministry. Gracious Lord, I ask that you would provide richly for these who are called to leadership. I pray that you would make their work fruitful as they organize and they plan and they lead the meetings of their committee, their board, or task force. 
send your Holy Spirit upon their whole group, that they can come together as a team to accomplish their goals. I pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.